Hallelujah, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Three videos in one month. I know, I know, I'm myself is shook, everyone is shook, but this is another special collaboration with these talented artists to celebrate Pride Month, which I think should be every month, you know. But you know what? We will take what we can get. Make sure to check out Doll Motion, Delightful, Cairo's Workshop, and Moonlight Jewel. And I'll leave their links down below. For my doll, I will be making Sasha Velour from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. I've always loved her artistic views and the messages that she conveys. Most of her looks are intricately designed and very clever. I've also seen her perform live and her shows are so unique to her and it is literally art in motion. The look I've chosen to make is her Season 10 Meet the Queens. I just thought that it was really really creative, graphic, and stunning. It gave me so much Cruella de Vil vibes but I think it also is because I'm biased to black, white, and also red. I'll be using this Barbie that I actually found from Savers and thought that she was really really cool and unique. After doing research, I found out that she is a chemotherapy doll created as Barbie's friend called Ella to give a better understanding and strength to children fighting cancer all over the world. I thought she was a perfect match for Sasha Velour because Sasha is actually a bald queen in tribute to her mother having cancer. Her mother struggled with chemo and losing her hair, but Sasha really pushed her to embrace her bald head and still see beauty and femininity within. I thought that was such a beautiful sentiment and I wanted to do the same with the Ella doll. I want to give her a new life to celebrate our cancer fighting heroes all over the world and also give pride to the LGBTQ plus community. Unfortunately one of her arms is broken so I will be giving her a made to move body instead. I will be replacing the made to move hands with the original hands that she came with because I love how they are posed. As usual, let's get her acetone and remove her factory paint. Then after spraying her mug with Mr. Super Clear, I will use my watercolor pencils and pastels to sketch her mug. Having a raised eyebrow will create more eyelid space, which will help with feminizing a masculine face. Sasha's eyebrows are very graphic, so I'm trying my best to make clean and sharp lines. Let's also not forget her semi-unibrow. I think I've heard that she also refers to it as her own crown, and I thought that was genius. I'm overdrawing her lips to change the overall shape and expression. Sasha's iconic makeup is actually inspired by Frida Kahlo and Nosferatu, and pretty much just looking like a fierce evil queen. For contouring, Sasha likes to exaggerate the lines of her contour and have it blend to her head, so I'll be using tape to create a defined line and shade it with pastels. Drag makeup in real life is like repainting a doll, actually. You have to cancel out the natural features to achieve the look you're going for. I also contoured her jaw to modify the shape and make it more angular. I use a light touch with pencil to contour her nose. I do want her nose to be really really defined and really really thin and sharp and pencil will work a lot better and I just buff it out with a small brush. Then I use white pencil to highlight her nose. It really emphasizes the new shape that we added and it makes it a lot thinner, smaller, and pointier looking. And then I color her iris and also her eyeshadow. Every time I spray MSC, it creates a new layer and it saves the older layer. So I keep going back and forth to everything that I want to be more brighter and more pigmented. 
Then we go ahead and give the graphic contrast with the black pencil and go over her eyebrows and also the eyeliner. Sasha Velour has definitely become one of my favorite queens of all time. I just love that she knows how to perform, she knows how to turn looks, and that she is nice, that she's actually kind. When I saw her perform Praying by Kesha live, oh my goodness you guys, I really, my mouth was wide open, I could not believe it was happening, it is so good. You guys should check it out, it's all over YouTube, she performs really really well, she uses projectors lights and all that she's fully equipped you guys it is such a production number and it's definitely a must I added small lower lashes and thin gray lines to give the brows more dimension I use white acrylic paint to clean up her sclera and add the cash lights as well I gave her lips a coat of glue and I sprinkled red fine glitter all over it and I wait for it to dry before cleaning it up. It looks really really cool, it's very sparkly. Last part is adding the lashes for a three dimensional look. And now we are done with Sasha Velour's face. And I really really love how it came out, it's very weird but the contours in her face, the lines, they look so satisfying because they're so sharp and clean. I don't know. I'm gagged, I'm gooped, like, I can't. Let's go ahead and move on to her outfit. <laughs> like a lot of queens who joins Drag Race, I cannot sew. I embrace my haute glue couture, and so I had this dress made by Deluxe Designs from Instagram. She is a Drag Race fan too, which I was shocked. I was gagged. She is amazing, you guys should definitely check her out. The iconic dress made by Diego Montoya on Instagram was actually worn by Sasha twice. She recycled it to make it look like a gothic Schiaparelli inspired look. Okay! I found these black and white trims from a local fabric store and I actually cut it in half and I glued it together onto the bottom of her skirt to create these ornate lines and flowers. The real main challenge when you're trying to recreate a certain look is trying to translate that into doll form. Obviously the fabric that she used for her skirt, the real one, is a different fabric. It looks a lot flowy and it's not as structured as these trims, but I think I was able to achieve the look a lot more accurately because I use these trims and because I customize them to the length and also the width that I need them to be. And we are done with the black side and I am really satisfied with how it came out. I am really really proud of the technique that I used for the trimming and the overlapping of it. It looks really really good. It took um, maybe like a full one day for the black part. It takes a lot of patience. <laughs> now let's go ahead and tackle the white side. It's actually really funny how satisfying this look sped up because that wasn't the case when I was doing this in real time. It was kind of annoying and the process was really really slow. Sometimes I really wish that we can move that fast, you know? And we have completed the bottom of her skirt. It looks really really cool. I added some wire under her hemline so I can actually manipulate it and pose it as well. So now that's out of the picture, let's go ahead and move up top. I use cut up faux leather fabric for her shoulders to give it that sharp angle and I also use that for her asymmetrical peplum. And then I paint her left side white to match the entire side. I found this metallic fabric that in doll scale can look like chainmail or scales and I'm just gonna attach that to her neck. And then I use my haute glue couture to add details all over her dress. Obviously I use the reference photos to make sure that I add it specifically to where it needs to be. And because hot glue dries kind of transparent, I'm gonna go over it with black and white paint. And next, you guessed it, more glitter! I'll be using actual fine glitter, glitter glue, puffy glitter, 
sequin glitter, any other glitter. Literally, I've used so many glitters and beads for this dress. So beware when you're using glitter to work as clean and organized as possible. Obviously, I'm speaking from my mistakes. So um, yeah, don't do what I did, which is like scattered glitter all over my table and floor. <laughs> yeah. I found these micro crystals from Joann's, I believe, and I'll be using that to divide her dress in the middle. And then I just added smaller crystal beads on the white side and black beads on the black side. It actually looked like black pearls, which is really, really cool. And so yeah, I just kind of scattered it around her dress. I want her earrings to really move and be animated when I move the doll and so I'm using these micro chain links that I got from Joann's and I'm just gonna glue that to this crystal earring that I found from the dollar store. For her hands, I'll be painting her left hand white and her right hand black. I'm also gluing this faux fur trim that I got from Joann's onto the ends of her sleeves. Next, let's go ahead and whip out our clay. You can use air dry clay, polymer clay, but for me, I'll be using epoxy sculpt. And I'm gonna go ahead and combine the two elements together to create the avatar. I'm just kidding. But we will be creating the heart that decorates her chest, which I also paint in ruby red. I also added red strings and thread to cascade down the heart. I think the original is beads, but that is too big for doll scale. I also covered the entire heart with the red glitter. For added definition and because I really want to use it, I'll be adding these garnet micro beads onto the heart. For her dagger, I'll be using one of these crosses that I got from Joann's. And this is the one that I thought would be perfect for the dagger used into the heart. I used doll packaging for the blade part and I actually just creased it in the middle to create more of a dagger appearance and then I'm gonna super glue the cross onto it. Then I will be painting the blade silver and the cross gold. I added a crystal in the middle of the cross and then I highlighted the perimeter of the cross with white pearl paint. Now let's go ahead and put it together. Alright mom! To create the dripping ketchup, um, ketchup, I will be using the faux leather, paint it in red, and draw the ketchup drops all around it. Cut it out and then add glitter all over it. Then let's go ahead and glue it onto her dress. For her hair, I use this remnant from my Alice doll and I just coat the entire thing with matte Mod Podge and I just push the hair around to create the swirl. Let it dry overnight and you have your hair piece. This is actually surprisingly very easy but very satisfying to make. I don't know, it looks really really cool. And I just go ahead and glue it onto her scalp. And last but certainly not the least is her shoes. Sasha Velour loves wearing platform shoes because she usually has really really big gowns and really really long gowns and I think the platform shoes really really helps her. So I just painted black and white for each shoe and obviously we give her the red bottoms. It is my favorite thing to do on shoes if I can do it and I think the white, black and red really just matches the entire dress and the entire look. Kimchi! Violet Chachki! Raja! Todrick Hall Ah, 
Raja. And don't forget about me, Sasha Valour. Hey beauties, we hope you enjoyed this video and we would love to greet you Happy Pride Month! This is something that we should be celebrating every single day because the LGBTQ community has accomplished so much and we have to celebrate people's authenticity, individuality, charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent. Be true to who you are and don't let others deter you from your one true self. And always remember, love is love and it gets better. Okay!